Right, I believe it is recording. Hi. Okay. So. So. Oh, I have to open everything now. One day we'll come in. One day Emily will have a. I can't say that. You know what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Mister. I sit on the other side of the desk and don't do anything. That was the agreement that we agreed to do this radio show. <laughs> okay. Right. That's why Emily's wearing the headphones. I can't hear anything right now. Okay. I'm only working on the fact that I think you all can hear me because I can see, like, bars going yeah. up and down. Well, I can hear you, so I You're assume. in the same room as me. <laughs> I have headphones on. <laughs> I can only hear you through the headphones. Okay, right. <clears throat> Shall I just go for it then? Yeah. Oh, this episode is prefaced by the fact that Emily has made me wake up an hour earlier than normal. Yeah. Because she can't schedule things. No, so I did mess that up. Any drop in quality will be blamed on the fact that Emily is baby sleep deprived. You, you didn't realise that we were live, but behind you in giant red letters it says on air. Am I facing this way or that way? <laughs> I can't oh, see those letters. Goodness. Okay, anyway, right. <clears throat> Moving on. Jean-Baptiste Belly. I think this man is perhaps the most obscure historical figure we've done so far. I mean, I mean we've done Lenin and Lenin Elizabeth, Elizabeth, Elizabeth the first. first. So yeah. yes, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but someone who is definitely worth exploring a little more in depth. Rob, do you have any idea who Belly is? No. Good. <laughs> literally <laughs> says in my notes, Rob says no. Uh, <laughs> What are you tapping? I'm not tapping. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. Move again. Yeah, when you move your chair, it picks up. Great, so now I can't talk. Now I can't move. <laughs> no. Um, right. Anyway. Well, lucky for you, we finally hit on my niche area of history, so buckle up for a gentle introduction to a man we should all be well aware of, a man fundamental to French history, and more importantly, perhaps, the history of Haiti. John. It is Haiti, yes. Not Haiti. 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 Are we picking up? Because those bars went real low. That's because I whispered, but I can turn it up if you want. Ooh. Turn it up! Ooh. Is that loud in your headphones now? It's really loud. Oh, the, the, you've got the headphones, I can't hear anything. No, no, this is how it is now. Cool, Everyone fine. will have to adjust. Whatever. Rip um, to those wearing headphones. R.I.P. <laughs> okay, anyway. Uh, so. <clears throat> right. I'm trying to think where to start if you have absolutely no knowledge of this person. Who I'm is he? Kind of like Jean-Baptiste Belly. So, he was born in Senegal. Cool. So, Senegal is, um, I believe at this time, a French colony. Cool. Or if, at least if it's not a French colony at this... Sorry. Ow. <laughs> at least if it's not a French colony, then it's um, a, like, a sphere of influence. Mm -hmm. Okay, put it that way. So... When he is two years old, he is sold into slavery. Unfortunate. Unfortunate. Um, and he is sent to Saint-Domingue. Do you know where Saint-Domingue is? I've heard of it. I'm not sure quite where it is. Right, so Saint-Domingue is now known as Haiti. Ah! Yeah. So saint Do you know where Haiti is? It's in the West Indies. Isn't it? Yes. <laughs> Thank God. Um, so the, the French slavery system in Sandomang is, is weird um, but to give you an idea it's like I don't know if they had this in the British colonies but mm -hmm. you can work enough and earn enough yeah Question you can buy mark. your way out yeah that you can buy you your can own. buy your way out but I swear slaves don't earn any money well they can well apparently <laughs> that's how the British worked it this is, this is my niche area of history <laughs> okay good uh, is that the British um, what you would do is you'd work as a slave for most of the day mm -hmm. and then you'd work on a farm that you also in the land that you were in you would farm your own crops and then you could mm -hmm. sell those off and that way you could make some money ah. to then buy your way out right so he did that um, and he bought, he bought his own freedom well uh, I always oh, should preface this that for once I'm using more than just Wikipedia. Emily's read a book. I've read two articles. Whoa! Uh, so What's the first one, I'm just gonna like declare them, like I'm leaving the airport. So it's uh, <laughs> <laughs> any sources to declare. <laughs> it's a uh, Jean Baptiste Bellimar, The Obscure Life, The Authentic Legacy by Robert Fikes Jr. Ah. Uh, from the oh, it has a bad name. From the Negro History Bulletin, okay. uh, volume 45, number 1, 
1982. Okay, we didn't need this many details. Pages 16 to 18. I will, like, okay, I get it. And then we have uh, Le Portrait Parlant de Jean-Baptiste Berry by uh, Michel Bucuyon in 19th century French studies. Emily speaks French. I don't know if we ever brought that up. Uh, Emily is questionable. Em Emily speaks French with a Corsican accent but can't really speak it. <laughs> but she reads French. <laughs> For goodness sake, Monsieur Guichonet, why did you teach me <laughs> Corsican accent? Uh, yeah, it's really unfortunate. Mm. No one, uh, none of my professors who can speak French can understand what I'm saying. Because they're all from Paris. They can't have, surely people <clears throat> from people from Corsica can understand Parisian. It's a bit like, Parisian. I think it's a bit like going to other people with the thick Yorkshire accent you're, a, you're like a you're like a French version of a scouser yeah <laughs> yeah unfortunate um, anyway right back to where it was yeah so it's quite impressive yeah. he was a slave it's not bad good job not bad not bad, not bad. <laughs> <laughs> I think he did how old well. was he oh goodness um, I'm not exactly sure his life is kind of a we don't know a lot about him okay so there's there's for some reason I mean we all know the reason <laughs> Well, he went to prison, that's a big reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, not a lot is known about him. Cool. Uh, not as much as Toussaint Louverture. Do you know who Toussaint Louverture is? Right, we'll, we'll come to him in a minute. I don't know why I'm shaking my head, you can't hear that. Yeah, you that. need to say I no. I might have nodded, yes, I know exactly who that is. <laughs> no. French name, who I couldn't even repeat to you. <laughs> let's not. <laughs> I was about to say, let's try. No, let's that's not try, because that'll offend not. the nation of France. Okay, um, so... How much do you know about the... Okay, well, let's start this is, here. This whole episode is going to be a How lot of being like... How much do you know? Nothing. Cool. <laughs> Emily lectures for ten minutes. New question. So, so, I'm going to get no jokes in here. <laughs> oh, okay. So, um, he actually fought in the American War of Independence. Ah, uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Guess on whose side? The Americans, I imagine. Yep. Because obviously... It's the French the, the French and the, the Haitian. Yep. Yeah. Um, uh, and then... Okay, how much do you know about the Haitian independence? Not as much as I should. Right. So, Haitian independence starts up, I believe it's 1791. Okay. Pressure. Uh, yeah, that was about the art. Oh, that's, that's not... Let's have a look. Um, What's the date of the French Revolution again? I mean, uh, 1789. Okay, so this is after... This is Just so, after. so it is because of the French Revolution that this happens. Cool. <clears throat> because basically, um, the French Revolution comes with the idea of, uh, you know, uh, liberté, égalité, fraternité, and the idea you that... didn't have to do that in the French accent. Yes, I did. <laughs> 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 um, and the idea that you, uh, every man is free, right? There were some, some iffy race ideas going around in the Enlightenment. I do not want to say that the Enlightenment was not racist because it definitely was <laughs> in many different ways. But um, it did mean that uh, people of colour for the first time were given the opportunity to be like, well, I am, a, I too am an individual oh, deserving of freedom, right? Um, and this starts the anti-slavery debate yeah uh, which I believe Britain is the first place to it's the abolish. first empire to, uh, to abolish slavery yeah, yeah slavery ever I believe and then it was like the first person to start no it's the Dutch the Dutch started the Dutch they? are bad the Dutch started the Romans it. aren't great let's not, let's not yeah the Romans were Rome. also awful the Romans were terrible the Greeks were <laughs> the Greeks I don't think had I think they were too either. incompetent to have a massive slave yeah trade. no no, the, the Romans were super bad, and then it stopped for a little while, I believe. Do you want to know an interesting thing about how the American slavery system came up? Oh, goodness, do I? Yes, I do, because I don't get to talk about Okay, <laughs> sure, 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 sure. So you know how in, um, in, like, in Britain and France there's a very like, economic view of slavery? Yeah. And that you can buy your way out of it? Yeah. And in Spain, and in lots of sort of southern Europe, there's mm -hmm. a very religious element to slavery, which is that you can convert out of slavery. Because, yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah, Spain yeah. and Italy tend to have more rights for slaves because they're seen more as subjugated peoples right. that we are currently enslaving, who could then convert out of that status, whereas in Britain they're more property that oh, could then buy themselves out and exchange themselves for other things. France is like halfway. I'll tell you a little bit France about France is a bit halfway. But then there's like, when it comes to America, there's an interesting bit, because like a load of Spanish show up and a load of English show up, and they have to kind of muddle through their own system. Um... And there's some argument to say that the, when, as soon as America had finished getting rid of the Spanish version of slavery, mm -hmm. um, the Civil War breaks out and they have to get rid of slavery. 
Right. Because as soon as they've like unified it under a whole like people are property thing, everyone's suddenly much more uncomfortable <laughs> with that as a concept. Well, and they start that's getting interesting, rid of it. Because France was also there, right? Yeah. Uh, France's on. opinion of slavery, especially actually in Canada and uh, French America. Would you be quiet? Um, sorry, I'm talking to my phone, not, not to Rob. <laughs> um, Emma! The, the French perception of uh, uh, slavery in the Americas was that, like you said, it's a, they have a very patriarchal view. Mm. So their idea is that uh, if, you're a, if you're a Catholic man you should try marrying a Native American woman. Um, and the idea is that, like, eventually she'll... Which is totally the opposite way that we ended up going with the whole race problems. Yeah, <laughs> but this is, like, where the... But what happened, and this the reason I'm talking about it is it severely impacted their opinion on uh, slavery, is because what happened is the uh, Native American culture is um, matriarchal, uh, so, well, I mean, obviously the, the men ran it, but the matriarch was important and uh, she had a lot of influence. So what happened is when the Native American woman gave birth to her children, she took them back to her culture um, and the men tended to follow. The French men tended <laughs> to follow. And this, like, completely threw the Jesuits and the Catholic missionaries, other Catholic missionaries, they were like, well, what is happening? So I thought the French man would come and <laughs> so spread French. The French sent a load of missionaries to convert the Native Americans, and the Native Americans converted their missionaries. Yes, by, by accident. <laughs> um, and, like, what it, what it meant was that France took up this assimilationist mm. policy instead of, like, uh, and they came up with like blood purity and stuff. They were like, Gross. yeah, they were like uh, the Native American women are like spoiling the blood pool, and it's called it's in French it's song, and this idea of song and like. So it's all the French's fault. No, they just Sounds like. Sounds like it to me. You heard it here <laughs> first, folks. <laughs> they just, Everything is. They the just happen to have a problem before anyone else had a like sounds like it's their problem. fault to me <laughs> anyway anyway where were we <laughs> yeah so John just pulled his way out what happens in Haiti is that they get this idea that hey maybe slavery isn't so great I'm trying to remember it's something I like I put it to you that some of them have had that idea before <laughs> I think it's like two thirds of Haiti is like slaves yeah that makes sense there's I, I can't remember exactly but there's way more black people black Africans than there are uh, white French. Yeah. There's also way more in French. This is going to sound bad. In French, it's called mulattoes. Oh uh, yes. Mm-hmm. So like, um, I don't know if that's still a used term. They use it in America. Well, there you go. So mulattoes, um, and it's it is a French term, and it's the, those in the mixed race. Yeah. Uh, people and it's like a it's uh, it's almost like a caste system. So you have the white people at the top, and you have the mulattoes. Kind we're, of in the middle. We're walking on a lot of eggshells around this topic because there's certain things that there are no jokes in whatsoever. No, you got to just allow <laughs> on. We're just going to get the, through the race theory. I just got, I just got to give you the context <laughs> and then we can make jokes. And then at the bottom you have uh, black Africans. Yes. So what happens in Haiti is that there's so many black Africans who are like, hmm, maybe this isn't how life should be. Mm. It's just, you know, fair. fair. And, and they um, start a revolution. And it's sort of complicated. Okay, give me the short version. <laughs> I, the thing is, I don't really understand because I wasn't paying attention in that seminar. Sorry, David. Fair enough. It I was don't think he's listening. Boring. And if he is listening, <laughs> hi, David. <laughs> um, so basically, uh, Billy fought against the colonists. Cool. And there's someone called Toussaint Louverture, mm -hmm. who's like famous in Haiti. I believe he comes the f he becomes the first. Um, it's not a president, but it's like person in charge. Person in charge of Haiti, right? And and Belly fights against the colonists. Cool. So against the white people. Makes sense. However, I can't remember when, but at some point, France, because it's it's the. Uh, I believe it's called the, the National Convention mm -hmm. at this time. <clears throat> so n before the directory, I believe. All of these are just words to me and 90% so, of the people in the world. <laughs> so after the French Revolution, obviously, you have, um, you have a period of relative 
okayness cool. for a while. Then they start cutting people's Then the off. terror happens, mm-hmm. yeah, and they kill the king. And I think that's when the directory takes over. Cool. Um, I'm not exactly certain. Hang on, I'm going to get a, a, a timeline of French... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> French... Uh, this is my specialist area of history. Do you know how complicated it is? <laughs> I can do all the, the republics and things, but... Uh, but, okay, French Republic. Uh, but, like, I can't do the, and then it was the convention, and then it was the assembly, and then it was the directory, because, to be honest... All of these mean the same thing. It's just different people in charge. Uh, history of France it is. I hope we're on BBC Bite Size here. Plug for BBC Bite Size. Long 19th century. Here we go. Uh, yeah, because then the monarchies were stored and everything, which everyone forgets. Really? Yeah. Oh, the bourbon thing. Bourbon. Mm. No? Is that later? No, the bourbons are the originals. Right. Uh, I believe. And then you have... the bourbon restoration. Oh, yeah, thing. no, you're right, yeah. The bourbon restoration. Ah, I'm a French historian. Um, and then you have the... Uh, they're also known as the July monarchy, or the... The Doléance, I believe. Um, I'm just trying to, like... Okay. Right. So this is the... Yeah, the National Assembly. Cool. So it goes from the Stats General, cool. which are the um, the tennis courts. Yes. You know, yeah, those yeah, ones. Yeah. And they form the National Assembly. Cool. What boys? And, and then at some point, something happens. And this is like a constitutional monarchy, so it's not a republic cool. yet. So the king so is Louis still... Louis still Louis is still in charge, technically. Technically. Isn't he in prison? No, not at this point. He's just hanging in no, the He side. runs away. Oh, okay. Um, Isn't there that story that he gets recognised by someone recognising yeah. his face from a coin? Yeah. And he gets sent to prison Wasn't when he's escaping. Um, and then, yes, so not the directory. The directory takes over in 1795. So I was right. I was right. All that to prove I was right. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> anyway, the person we're supposed to be talking about. Yeah, so the National Assembly, I believe, at some point is like, huh, okay, that's kind of fair. Maybe we shouldn't be doing this. So the National Assembly decide that slavery is actually a terrible idea. I, f- I believe it's the National Assembly. Yeah. One of them, it doesn't matter. Anyway. One of them. Um, yeah, and so eventually France comes to like an agreement with Toussaint Louverture. Mm-hmm. And they agree that, that Haiti is, is run by uh, Asian. Cool. One well of them. Um, and Toussaint Louverture, it's, it, I should point this out, is black. He's not, yes. he's not a white guy. I had guessed this. Uh, I just thought I'd clarify. Um, and so they send three representatives to the French National Convention cool. for the northern region of Saint Domingue. So it's still Saint Domingue, I think, at this point. Okay. It's not quite become Haiti. As I said, very complicated. No, no. Um, irrelevant. We're here to talk about. <laughs> this is about one guy. Um, yeah, so three deputies. And he. So they had three of them. I think there was one white man, one mulatto. And one black man, which makes Jean Baptiste Belly the first ever black deputy to have a seat in the convention. Oh, well done, him. Yeah, um, and he spoke in a debate about the abolition of slavery. Mm-hmm. And I th- I'm taking a stab at a guess, I believe it was 1794. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, it was, we don't have a record of the speech. No. For some reason. Why not? I don't know. Uh, to no be fair, uh, the terror did happen. After this. Okay, fair enough. I imagine stuff got destroyed. I would imagine But so. um, he, um, <clears throat> uh, apparently he was very, like, eloquent, and he got his ideas across, and it was a really popular speech, and he was one of the main helps for abolishing slavery. Ah. Yeah, it's nice. Very nice. Very nice. Um, however, <laughs> did you know <laughs> that France is the only country, I believe, to have reinstated slavery <laughs> <laughs> after it abolished it. <laughs> France. <laughs> so, um, basically, French, French history <laughs> is almost equivalent to Russian history in the and then it got worse. Yeah, pretty much. And then it collapsed again. <laughs> and <Pretty then>. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it was Napoleon. Napoleon oh, who come reinstated on. slavery. And I think that is, if I'm remembering correctly, also the reason why Haiti eventually becomes Haiti. Because they were fine being a part of the French Empire as like a 
a separate sort of state where makes sense in the American. Toussaint Duverture was running the show mm. and then they'd abolished slavery and it was good and then they reinstated slavery and it, absolutely not and you know I don't know I think they went there and tried to put all the black people back into slavery and it did not go well no well I think once you have freed them all given mm. them all land and power mm. and then you try and go back with ten men in a boat yeah it's not and also, like, it's worth pointing out, ha- the Haitian Revolution was one of the most horrendous examples of, like, colonial warfare. Really? Like, they used to, yeah, they used to train dogs to rip uh, people apart and stuff. Awful. Yeah. Um, this is not a cheery episode. Both of them were violent. Both sides were violent. Yeah. Incredibly violent. Yeah. Uh, but let's not it's a give... It's uprising. Let's give yeah. them that. <laughs> but let's not give <laughs> France, like, a... A part. No, I'm not kidding. <laughs> <'Cause>, uh, <laughs> I don't still think history awful. gives France a part. Uh, right. Um, yeah, so they reinstated slavery. Reinstate slavery. slavery. Mm-hmm. Imagine being in a country that reinstates slavery. Even America didn't do that. Even America didn't do that. <laughs> yeah. And they're racist as all hell. I don't think it lasted very long. But then Napoleon didn't last very long in the grand scheme of things. Well, he lasted a while. He lasted from, ooh, 1795. Um, no, 99. 99. My apologies. Until... 1799 until 1815. That's not bad. Yeah. For an expansionist dictator. I think he did as well as the Nazis did. No, that's not the Nazis. Sorry? That's not the Nazis, isn't it? No, it's not, no I mean as in space wise. Oh, in space wise? He, he took he over. And he did not have to invent fascism. No. He didn't invent uh, fascism. He didn't have to use fascism. Yeah. He did, however, have a massive war with the Spanish, which invented guerrilla warfare. Is that where guerrilla warfare comes yeah. from? Do you know what guerrilla means in Spanish? No, I do. Tiny war. Oh. Because they'd have li- lots of little tiny wars. Adorable war. warfare. Not adorable. <laughs> 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 Horrifying, but yeah. Um, that's that's where guerrilla warfare... Uh, Good idea. Mm-hmm. They're doing it ever since. Yeah, they have. Especially in Vietnam. Very successful. Very successfully. Uh, anyway... So, he had a nickname, right? Is it John? No, it's... it's. I mean, it's spelt... I can't quite work out where it came from no. or why it exists. Uh, Mars? Mars, as in the planet, as in the Mars bar. So, some some people call him Jean-Baptiste Bélimard. Okay. So, it is spelt like Mars the planet, which I thought maybe, you know, he's like a soldier. Maybe it is about... God of War kind of thing. Mars the planet, yeah. But then I remembered that in French... Mars means, uh, so Mar means March, as in the month. As in the month, March? Yes. Was he born in March? No one knows. <laughs> Maybe that was his way of linking to historians to remember his birthday was in March. No. That's very weird. Uh, I, like, I did do, I, look, this is why I did some additional research, because mm. like, Wikipedia was so unhelpful. This time. <laughs> um, but He's not the kind of person where Wikipedia would be that helpful. No, I couldn't find anything. About Maybe Mars. I just didn't look hard enough, but I well, couldn't you know, see it. We only have a week to prepare these things. Yeah, this is true. Oh, we say we. Emily only has a week to prepare these things. Oh, I have a whole does. hour to think of something funny to say. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The resentment across this table is incredible. Oh, it's just so strong. Um, right. Yeah, I have no idea what I want to say on that. I don't know what it means. <laughs> Maybe he was an early pioneer of the Mars bar. Maybe. Maybe that's where Mars Bar took its name from. Maybe we should all do that. Maybe um, Emily, Emily Tarry June. See, now people know your birthday and they're going to find you on the internet. And like, they don't know the date. They can curse <laughs> you through some witch spell thing. <laughs> <laughs> Nor do they know the year. <laughs> we can all work the year <laughs> Not all of us. We don't know. Okay. I don't believe I've stated my age. No. I'm 54. Everyone now believes that. Emma is the 101. Emma, Emma, is, an, Emma is doing so well. Uh, okay. Um, Emma had you at the age of 50. Yes. <laughs> 53 years old. Anyway. 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 Ignore that. No. You fool. 50, 101 minus 54 is not 53. Yeah, okay, fine. The point of the point stands is that that would make it very old. Okay, so basically, stuff happens. Again, not sure of the details myself. So he was voted out of the convention in oh. 1797. Boom. 1797, on this timeline, is it is still 
No, it's now the directory. So that's the terror. The terror, yeah. Cool. So the terror's going on and he gets voted out, which, if I'm honest, makes sense. Yeah. The, a lot is happening A in lot France is going on in France. Um, <clears throat> so he decides to go back to Saint-Domingue in Haiti um, in 1802, but is arrested and is sent back to a prison on... Wait, he's arrested in Haiti, not Haiti? Saint-Domingue. He's, yeah, he's either arrested on the way or when he gets there. Okay. Why? Uh, because, uh, I'm, you know, I'm not exactly sure. I believe it's because at this point they're fighting them again. Uh, okay. It's a very long and complicated war. And I can't say I have a full... So the French arrest him is the point, not the Haitian. No, the French arrest him. Cool. Yeah. Uh, I mean, let me let me have a quick... You can't do minute. research live on air. Well, no, I've, I've already done it. I'm just looking for a date. Um, this is amateur hour now. <laughs> I'm sorry. What have you done? <laughs> anyway. Um, we should have another show called Amateur Hour. We should, well, it's just this show. It's, not <laughs> <I do that. laughs> it's just the, We just re-released this show. Yeah. Oh, I, I found the, uh... oh. oh no. So they don't have record of what he said in the assembly about the abolition, but they do have record of what someone shouted after him. Well, who should, what, what did they shout after him? So apparently after he had finished Arnaud Lavessieux of Sarth, no idea how you pronounce that in French, rose to reproach the people of France, and he shouted, let us repair the wrong, let us proclaim the liberty of the blacks. Um, so they were proper going for anti-slavery. Yeah, they were. They were proper doing it. Um, then we have the terror. Not down. Say. Yeah. Yeah. It. So it all gets very complicated. So when Napoleon Bonaparte, so I'm now quoting from this article from uh, Free Um what was his name? So when. Napoleon Bonaparte took control in France. He decided to restore slavery, which is what I said, and reassert French authority in the colony, dispatching a fleet carrying an army of 12,000 men. Oh, that's a lot of men. To, to quote, humble the blacks. Ah. Um, the campaign, which began in early 1802, was doomed to failure. Yeah. So basically, what well, happened imagine, is. You have to have. When you're going mm -hmm. a place mm -hmm. to invade it, yeah. you've got to have somewhere to land. You've got to have some place that's yours. That you can then like go out of. Okay, so this is interesting. So, I've 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 done a little bit of reading. Um, in two. This seconds. is what happens when Emily does lots of reading. <laughs> yeah, they all, all like uses out to <laughs> only retain the irrelevant stuff. So what happened is he was loyal to Napoleonic France at the start. Cool. Went with the French army under General Charles Leclerc. Mm -hmm. uh, Side track. There is a um, super supermarché in France called Il Leclerc. From Edouard Leclerc, um, and that just that just tickled me. <laughs> when I was reading the reading, I don't think they're related to. Um, anyway, so Charles Leclerc um, leads this army to Haiti, but they like they fall out because of how horrifying the the war is, right? Uh, so uh, Bellimar, um, he is sent to France and imprisoned. So he goes not to escape. Napoleonic France, but to fight there, the people in Saint Domingue, the the blacks in Saint Domingue. Why? Because he's loyal to Napoleon. I'm suddenly less fond of this man. However, however, changes his mind when he sees how horrific it is. Yes. And is arrested. Yes. Um, and, and I will give him that hero moment, but let's let let us great. not forget that he went to subjugate. Yeah, it it wasn't great. Um, yeah, and he's imprisoned at Belle Isle, which is just off the coast of Brittany. Stop making noises with your Sorry. chair. <laughs> he's, imprisoned off he's imprisoned off Brittany. Yeah. Near the sea. Where he could escape. Yeah, but I mean, isn't that going back to their like weird perceptions of black people? That they can't swim? Have you never heard that? I have never heard that. So, because of slavery and um, a lot of people from... I don't know where Senegal is, actually, in Africa. But especially this was a thing in the British slave trade. 
is that because... Okay, Senegal's next to the sea, so this wouldn't really work. But when they took slaves from internal Africa, um, they couldn't... They'd never seen the sea before. Yeah. So they couldn't swim. They must have seen water. Which is why they uh, chucked them... They chucked them over the side of the boat. Yeah. Um, So there became this perception, and it still goes on today. It's why you don't see a lot of black swimmers in the Olympics. It's because people are inherently discriminating against black people. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of uh, Olympic swimmers, uh, black Olympic swimmers who talk about it, how hard it is. Mm. Mm. Interesting, yeah? It is interesting. Although this episode became very dark about race theory. <laughs> I think it's important to talk about race no, theory it's, sometimes. It's, 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 you know, it's just, just... What were you expecting? But we were like, let's make these people more diverse on this podcast were you expecting that it would be like and they were really successful and nothing bad ever happened valid valid (laughs) (laughs) sometimes you gotta talk about race theory (laughs) um right so yeah so he is imprisoned now this is where it gets interesting he may have died in prison okay he may not have died in prison okay right how much do we actually know about this very little (laughs) so there are two different theories one is that he dies in prison okay likely Um, and the other is that he survives and goes I believe goes back to Sundermang or Haiti I think it's Haiti so hang on a minute there's a theory that he goes back to Haiti but there's no record of him going back yeah it says according to one source he was executed possibly because of his former affiliation with Leclerc Okay. Um, after being taken prisoner. Uh, ooh, ooh, no, ooh, it's slightly different. I've misunderstood. So, he goes to prison. After two years of being in prison, he's released. Good. Um, through the aid of someone called Jean-Joseph Cambesseres, who I believe was the other deputy. Who so he missing. escapes or is released? Uh, he's, he's released. Cool. I believe um, Cambesseres was... Uh, yeah, we still got half an hour. Don't worry about it. In fact, we got to... Sorry, Rob looked at his watch. And I, was I like, looked at my watch don't and you suddenly realised that we'd actually just killed him off uh, and we're halfway through. Yeah, so don't worry, I've got more to talk about. Okay. Um, oh, I'm not really sure. I think he might have been... I, the problem is this writing is really small and I can't skim it because I'm not wearing my glasses. I have was not prepared. It's not... Okay, look, it's... Half nine in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Let me live... Okay, uh, where is it? I'm so angry. I know it's written here somewhere. I give up. I give up. This week on Amateur Hour. (laughs) (laughs) Emily forgets her glasses and has to read lots and lots of words. I would help, but it's in French. This one's in English. Okay, I would help, but I'm not going to. Tell them how close I am. Emily (laughs) is so close to the screen right now. Okay, anyway, right. Um, I have literally never seen anyone read that closely. What is wrong with your eyes? Uh, I just... I don't know. So he's allowed... Uh, he's allowed out of prison, thanks to this guy who may or may not be one of the other deputies cool. who was with him. We I, don't know. I have a feeling it's the mulatto one, but I can't quite remember. Ah! Um, and he's he returns to saint Yeah. in 1804, right, to, to stand by the revolution... Uh, and this is when it, we lose all trace of him, basically. Oh, so he just vanishes after that point. Yeah. So he goes back once the French have been Yeeted. pushed out. Um, the only thing that is certain is that he died that year, 1804, right? Right. He died. But uh, he died of... So he was either executed because of his affiliation with Leclerc. Fair enough. Despite the fact he like split from him. But yeah, you yeah. know, that's fair. The Haitians don't know that. <laughs> um, I just don't know where he'd been. Yeah. But another source flatly denies that. Okay. You know, sometimes the study of history <laughs> is just deciding you who know. you believe more um, and going with yeah. that. Some some people say uh, there's two sources. One says that he was executed. One says he was definitely not executed. But either way, he died that year. We know he died. 1804. So it's 1804 and he's dead. Yeah. There's half an hour of this radio show left. Don't worry. Don't so, worry. Okay, okay. Because we're going to talk about like the impact he had and why oh, okay. he's worth talking about. Good. Uh, because honestly, hearing that story, you're probably like, what did this man really achieve? <laughs> Other than maybe influencing the abolition of slavery that was probably already coming anyway. Yeah. Um. But no, so... He had a cool hero moment. 
he did have a cool hero moment. Um, so it's there is this idea of um, later in France, so I think like the twentieth century, mm -hmm. late nineteenth century. It's called negrism. Cool. It's obviously like yeah, 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 yeah. I think we can all work that out. Um, Even with your course can accent. Shut up. <laughs> uh, so the thing is, he has a descendant called Jean Prisse Mars. Cool. Do you try and pronounce Again, that Mars. Yeah. Well, this is the thing. He's Jean Baptiste Billy Mars. So he changes his name to March. I think so. It's and it's passed man. on. Um, I'm not sure what relation Jean Pierre um, Mar has to Jean Baptiste. But anyway, he works off Jean Baptiste's um, fight against slavery to uh, help this um, negrisme, which is like this idea of taking pride in the indigenous culture. And it happens in France, but it also happens in Haiti. Yeah. Uh, but um, you have people like Amy Césaire as well, um, who, like, we may do an episode on later. He's on the list, but yes, he is. But he was a lot about that sort of okay. pride in being black in France, yeah, yeah. And, the, um, and the difficulties, obviously. What I really want to spend some time talking about is the portrait of Jean Baptiste Bellimar by Annie Louis Giraudet. Have you ever seen this painting? Do you, what do you think I'm about to say? <laughs> Go on. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have not seen this painting. If you have not seen this painting, do not worry, because after this uh, episode is done, I am going to put up a picture on um, Instagram. If we were very clever, we could halfway through change the picture that's on the YouTube video. Um, I mean, we could. If we do that, it will appear now. Okay. There you go. There's your cue. Right. Thanks. If um, if nothing has happened, it's because Emily's lazy. Uh, can I again point out? Rob does no research. He is no help with the dials. He does not set it up, and I edit the video and put it on YouTube and run the Instagram. He runs the Twitter, which has Twitter. three followers, I which is the... my two accounts and your account. Tis, tis that. However, <laughs> in my defence. You have no defence. I'm sure I'll come up with one at the end of this sentence. Wow. I realise <laughs> I forgot to tell everyone that we're going an hour early. <laughs> Emma isn't listening. No, we're talking I to ourselves. I told Emma. I only told Emma, though. <laughs> I, I may try and What do you want to do now? Should I tweet out being like... You yeah, tweet, for half tweet, an hour. tweet, tweet. And I'm also going to do a little um, uh, Anyone Instagram listening this story. Should, should actually follow the Twitter because it's fun and I run it. Is inherently better. Hey, we're live. Lol. I lol forgot to tell you. It was an hour early. Now there's just a bit of this where we're tweeting. This is. This <laughs> <laughs> week. A little eye emoji, you know, you know. No, I just tweeted, lol, we've been live for half an hour, I forgot to tell you. I said, hey, we're live, lol, forgot to tell you, it was an hour early this week. <laughs> Go. <laughs> right. I love running the Instagram, it's so much more fun. The Twitter's great, because it just means I tweet about We myself. have 40 followers. Yeah. Mm, I've been doing work. I have not. Yeah, I know. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so, the portrait of Jean-Baptiste Bellimar. Where is it? Um, I'm going to show questions. you a photo of it, and you're going to tell me... Your first impression. Okay, where is it? And we'll see. Um, what are you doing? Where is it? What do you mean, where is it? Where is the picture? Oh, goodness. Do you mean in the world? Yeah, in the world. People might want to go and see it. The Helen... Okay. In... In 1982, it was in the Helen Regenstein collection in the Art Institute of Chicago. Well, that's not helpful, is it? Well, I'm sorry. I don't live in 1982. <laughs> then look it up. I don't know how to spell it. Sean G E A N. Baptiste. Yeah, with an E. Billy. B E L L E Y. Portrait. It looks like this. Where are you? Oh. What is your impression? Describe what you see. Help the okay, listeners. Okay, right. So if Emily hasn't put this up, which she may or may not have. I will do, but not right now. Um, 
He's leaning on a statue of someone, the most intense man. Reynal. Okay, the most intense man I've ever seen mm-hmm. in my life. Mm-hmm. Um, he has possibly the best feather boa hat I've ever seen. He's got a lot of clothes. Why has he got cloths wrapped around him in the waist? That is the traditional uniform of a member of the convention. Cool. It's uh, it's the tricolour, it should be. Mm. I mean, the version I'm looking at is black and white, but I think it's the tricolour. Uh, blue, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and he's looking up, kind of disapprovingly, at the sky. And you notice nothing else? Uh, hat, green, the... No, that's it. Okay, interesting. So do you know why this portrait is really, really, really famous? Why? Because he has a big penis. Oh! <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, let's talk about they it. They put effort into painting that in. So let's talk about it. When I was told Are we allowed about to talk this about painting, it? <laughs> yeah, it's important. Okay. Um, again, it's to do with race theory. Okay. So when I was first taught to look at this portrait, I was told that it could be a shadow of his hand, if you look at where his hand nope, is. No, definitely not. Or it could be a penis. Definitely a penis. Um, art, th- art theory seems to think it's a penis, and who am I to argue with who art theory? Who am I to argue with artists? Um, but let's talk about, before we go there, let's talk about the actual painting. May I have the colour version back? There you go. Um, so, you can look at the black and white if you want, because you're going to need to look. Oh, you've got one. Look at you go. I have a phone. So, let's talk about it. Behind him, he's leaning on Reynal, right? Yes. So, um, Reynal is a Enlightenment thinker. Cool. Uh, a French writer and a man of letters, considered very influential. He wrote the Histoire philosophique de Deuxien uh, and So I believe he was, um, yeah, so it it's translates as the philosophical and political history of the two Indies, so the West Indies and mm-hmm. the East Indies, which is, you know, India, isn't it? East yeah, India. it's a problematic thing to call them. Cool. <laughs> Oh look! They, this they was written. They as well have called it Moneyport One and Moneyport Two. Yeah, yeah. Wow. It's not my fault. Um, <laughs> uh, although, was is the story that Columbus called them the Indies because he thought he'd he thought made he'd it to found India. India? Columbus was a moron. <laughs> we'll got, do an episode on Columbus. He one day. honestly was. He honestly was. Um, I believe he talks about uh, slavery. Okay. And the sort of. In a pro way or an anti way? I think anti. Okay. So sort of, you know, it's, he's an enlightened Frenchman. The idea is that you're, you're supposed to be sort of anti-slavery. Um, <laughs> to be part of the enlightened French So world. the idea that, that Jean-Baptiste Belly is leaning on the statue of Reynal, mm-hmm. it's kind of patronising in the sense that he's leaning on the shoulders of the white man mm. who liberated him. But at the same time, it's supposed to indicate, um, you know, that he is... This is the history of abolitionism in France. Yes. This is, um, he's coming from like a, a tradition. Mm. And he is just as established in France as Reynal is. Yes. Um, and then you have him wearing the national dress of the convention. He's got the tricolor around his waist. Mm-hmm. He is painted no differently than any other member of the convention would be. Yes. Right. And then you have this penis. Okay. Um, Was it well recorded at the time that he had a? No. So why do why do you think that they would paint it like that? Oh, I mean, on. go on. <laughs> go on. <laughs> well, okay. So, mm-hmm. if you think about race theory at the time, mm-hmm. you're looking for defining characteristics, and that could have been one of them. Mm-hmm. Um, it could also be that. This man had an inherent fondness of Jean Baptiste Belly and decided that this would be a nice way for it to be <laughs> to be remembered. Um, it could be the shadow of his hand. I'm not sure. You, is there an answer to this question? The reason is that our black men, uh, and it's still something that you know lingers yes. today, is that. Um, he is like it's supposed to be black men are more virile and yes. more animalistic so they have big um, penises yes right which is in, in it just ruins everything else 
in yes. the court trade. And this has really confused people for a long time. Because why would you go to all the effort of painting him as almost, you know... One of the Enlightenment, one of the Frenchmen. Enlightenment Frenchmen. And then do that. Right, and then I was reading... This is the article in French. Uh, the article, uh, Le Portrait de Jean-Baptiste Pelly. And in the article, they compare it with a uh, Portrait du Chateaubriand by the same painter. Uh-huh. Um, Chateaubriand was another thinker. Cool. I think he wrote uh, Genie's Mort du Christianisme or something. Genie du Christianisme, I think. Cool. Um, anyway. The, the, <laughs> the idea is that it's about masculinity. Yeah. In this period. So, uh, to quote... Um, she, I'm in, in case there's any French listeners here, I'm just going to say it in French and then I'll say it in English. Um, ces œuvres de Paul Le Franc contrastent, m'ont permis de m'interroger sur la représentation, sur la construction d'une certaine masculinité dans le peinture française à l'époque néoclassique. Ah. So, <laughs> yeah. so what she's saying. I thought of doing that halfway through while she was talking. <laughs> uh, so what she's kind of saying is, um, by the uh, contrast between these two paintings, uh, I may put up the Chateaubriand on the story, I won't put it up on the main Instagram, but you can have a look. Um, the contrast between the two paintings is about the... Pardon me the pain. Uh, Keep talking. Just shut up. Okay, I can't. I've cut Emily off mid-sentence. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, images. I hope they've just given me steak. Um, I don't want that. I don't know. There you go. Thank you. <clears throat> so the contrast between the... the ah. <laughs> Stop, I'm trying to be sensible. Go, 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 go. Um, so she's comparing them to look at the representation and construction of masculinity mm-hmm. in the French painter at the neoclassical period, is what she's saying. Okay. So in one sense, it's like maybe... Um, Giraudet was attempting to present masculinity um, and present him as, you know, male and, mm. and, and, you know... Strong. Strong. But it's, 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 it's in comparison to the Chateaubriand, which is supposed to be sort of more androgynous, he's, yeah. he's less um, strong male, he's more... Although he is still doing the arm in the jacket thing, which is a sort yeah. of Napoleonic it's a sort army of, thing. Um, if you look at uh, Billy as well, they're both sort of draped in a very feminine way. Yeah. Um, it's like relaxed. There. It's this sort of metrosexual almost vibe that you're getting. But from. also in the sort of reclining thinker kind of yeah. eating but grapes this is what and I mean. talking it's, about Socrates. It's that masculinity isn't necessarily anti-femininity in this period mm. and that maybe it's supposed to be like contrasting so the big penis with uh, the enlightened mind or or maybe it's just racist you know um I fear the latter so do I <laughs> <laughs> but it's nice to think but yeah it's it is what it is it's interesting it is interesting so, Art history is interesting. Art oh, history know. is interesting. It's not as interesting as all the rest of history, but it's interesting. <sighs> anyway, I think I've done what I can do. I think you have. <laughs> with Rob <laughs> weighing me down. <laughs> okay. Um, what do you think? What are your opinions? What is your conclusion? Um, normally we do a summing up. It's difficult to do a summing up. We've sort of done an episode in two parts. But... In terms of John, yes, did he achieve much? Probably he achieved as much as he could have been expected to. It, it doesn't help that we've lost all record of his life. It doesn't help that we've lost all record of his life, work and speeches. Yeah. Um, was he executed? Probably. I don't know. The French have a habit of executing people. No, it wasn't um, the French, it was the Haitians. <laughs> it was the Haitians, sir. Um... The portrait's very interesting, and I like mm. to think that there's a... I think even intertw- even if we say that it's a racist idea, the idea that there could be... It doesn't have to be one or the other. Yeah. You can have still the I think the physical remainings of a racialized thinking without the 
Maybe that's it. Maybe it it's is racist. racist, but he was. Uh, they were twine. Mm. I think. Which. But that's always the thing of race theory, isn't it? Is that they tend to take. Um, they tend to take certain people they approve of in this period and uh, sort of bring them into a sort of whiteness. Yeah. Um, so when you're putting him alongside white enlightenment thinkers, he may mm -hmm. be coming along and being like, ah, you see, physically he is black, but in his brain he yeah. was a white Frenchman. And yeah. that is what redeems him. That's what him, they're trying to do, yeah. what redeems him in France, which is horrifying. But that is very French. But it's a very French thing to do. We're not, so, we're not talking current French, no. by the way. I should, the British also did a similar thing, they just couldn't paint as well. The French are very focused on... That's true. British have you seen British paintings yeah, okay. in this period? They're <laughs> the, terrible The painting. French are very focused on assimilation and becoming yes. French. And this is clearly an attempt to make very French in the eyes of mm. a, a French. But you could suggest that this is a beginnings of not necessarily a physical Frenchness, but a mental and spiritual yeah. Frenchness. Which goes against, like, um, the sort of uh, Voltaire idea of, like, the racism inherently separate. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Well, interesting, sorry, I just you did a little, actually, a little research. Yeah. Um, Anne-Louis Giraudet, um, whose full name is Anne-Louis Giraudet de Russie Troison, mm -hmm. Interesting name is um one a man which I wasn't quite sure, which is why I didn't want to say Fair anything. Enough. But it is a man. Um, but he was the pupil of David. Do you know who David is? Jacques Louis David. God. No, Jacques Louis David. <laughs> no idea. Uh, he's the painter who did the painting of Napoleon on the horse. Ah. Yeah. So yeah, that's interesting. That is interesting. Sorry, I got distracted. That is interesting. But, yeah. Art history, interesting. Do you, just do you have not a last conclusion before I declare to you who the next person is? Um, like no. 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 Do I we? Do I we? Think, pr is Belly? Uh, I think he's a bit of a, a bit of a boy. He had his boy, hero moment. He had his bit. He had his portrayal moment of the Haitian he did. Revolution, which was it's a dodge. bit like in uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. You know when um, the what's his Where name? Where are you going with this? <laughs> the the with the the guy with the wig. Uh, who's like from the British Navy and he betrays them and then he comes back right at the end and gets stabbed. Oh, yeah, yeah. Commodore. Commodore. Yeah. I, like wondered, I was going to say Commandant and I was like, that's not that's right. Not it. That's, no, not, that's it. not it. That's not it at all. Commodore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. Yes. It's like that except more sensitive to yeah. <laughs> racial struggle. Yeah. But it is that moment. It is that moment. You I've that chosen moment. not to be yes. a horrible human being. Even though I have previously chosen to be. Yeah. It. Okay, so would you like to know who next week is? Yes, I would. Ba -ba -da -ba -ba. It's Frida Kahlo. Ooh, exciting. Who was actually right next to Jean-Baptiste Belly. Oh, nice. <laughs> we went from 19 to 20. We, yeah, we, we almost did um, Michelangelo. And then I was like, no, we need a woman. We need a woman. So we got Frida Kahlo. We're doing diversity. Diversity. Yeah. So. There we tune go. Tune in next week for Frida Kahlo. We did what I think was actually a rather interesting episode. Thank you. Honestly. <laughs> I tried very hard with once Wikipedia had failed Next me. Next week, normal Wikipedia services <laughs> yeah. will resume. <laughs> I'm sure the Wikipedia page on Frida Kahlo is extensive. <laughs> and if it is not extensive, it will soon be. Because why not? We may as well just add anything we find to it. <laughs> <laughs> You can do that I'm for gonna, once. You I'm can do update something. I'm going to the Jean page. <laughs> <with all laughs> no. Anyway, thank you for tuning in, and thank we will listening. see you next week. Bye. Bye.